finally know what games look like on the PlayStation 5 now. That's great. So is it a big jump over the PlayStation 4? Let's find out. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, a comparison between the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4's graphics. Starting off at number 10, it's Horizon Forbidden West versus Horizon Zero Dawn. Now, the PlayStation 5 gives us some amazing environmental and lighting effects. This stuff is on display in the demo we got on the PlayStation 5. I mean, look at the difference. While Horizon Zero Dawn itself is definitely nothing to scoff at, it's a very pretty game. It is definitely showing its age a bit next to Horizon Forbidden West. We're seeing a lot more variation in environment, and the environments that are even somewhat familiar just have a fidelity not only in lighting, as I mentioned earlier, but the sheer polygon count of pretty much everything, the shaders, the I, I just general quality of what everything looks like. If you showed this game to somebody 10 years ago, they would think that you were literally trying to sell them on going to see a CG movie. I mean, look at this monster. Look at the grass and moss. Look at these underwater environments. There's nothing like this on the PlayStation 4. Horizon Forbidden West did an amazing job demonstrating that new generational jump. At 9 is Spider-Man Miles Morales versus Spider-Man on PS4. The demo started with what's probably a cutscene, but we transitioned the gameplay pretty quickly. Now, I don't know exactly how much of the gameplay is going to continue having these dramatic camera angles, as the original Spider-Man game also showed us a lot of dramatic camera angles that weren't necessarily actual gameplay. But keeping that in mind, I think we got a pretty good look at exactly what level of detail we'll actually see in this game. And it is maybe not as big a jump as Horizon Zero Dawn, but a definite jump. For one, we're seeing more weather, more varied lighting, things look different to more of an extent shot to shot in this trailer than Spider-Man PS4. I mean, we're seeing a lot more colored lighting and self-casting of shadows, which is a really subtle difference, but actually takes a lot of horsepower, and it looks great. Moving on to number 8 is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart versus the Ratchet & Clank remake. Now, I think this is a really good place to demonstrate just how big of a jump we're seeing, because these are both very stylized, cartoonish games. You wouldn't be massively remiss to say that, say, character detail isn't really a lot different. That's not to say it doesn't look better. I mean, it does, but the environments are really where you're seeing this stuff manifest. I mean, the environments, the elemental effects. I mean, look, going from that PS5 shot to this PS4 shot, there's so much less going on. That's a tremendously complex environment there. But the most important thing to note is all of this instantaneous teleportation that is being made possible via the SSDs. It's not like this PlayStation 4 level here is uncomplex. It's just that what we're seeing on the PlayStation 5 is significantly more complex, and we're traversing between them using portals with instantaneous load times. Not only is it a great looking addition to the franchise, but as a tech demo, it was not only useful, but incredibly impressive. At number 7, we're going to compare Returnal to Control, Death Stranding, and maybe a little PT. Because obviously you don't have a direct comparison, but I mean, we have some really impressive effects here. We've gotten really close in on some character faces in all these franchises, and that's not to say that Death Stranding isn't like beautiful and impressive, but there's a lot of detail here. I would say our combat actually is pretty reminiscent of Control as far as what it looks like on screen. However, you can definitely tell way more going on. The effects are a lot more distinct, and there's less obscured by darkness. The environments, I would say, are definitely reminiscent of a Death stranding to me however they're a little more foreign as they're more willing to move away from a more natural look that death stranding attempts to maintain there's not a ton of interior work in this game but i do definitely see a comparison with control maybe valid to bring up pt we saw some lighting on a door and some of the interior lighting we see in returnal i think is reminiscent but at this point we definitely need to see more of returnal it's definitely impressive but it's not one to one we're comparing a few different games so we need to see more at number six we're going to compare gran turismo 7 and gran turismo sport now on the stream i think this one wasn't really easy to do a real comparison but now that we have 4k footage of both it's a fair amount easier to see that the gran turismo 7 is really impressive in some cases, this game feels like looking at film pause it and you see these beautiful ray traced motion blurred reflections as compared to the playstation 4 where you see the environmental box ones and a lot of the footage, when you pause it, just looks like a photograph. Inside, I mean, you see a lot of impressive lights reflecting off of all of the various surfaces. Outside, you see motion blur in a manner that really does a good job convincing you that you are watching film. 
I mean, interior shots, exterior shots, lighting and reflections are really the key here, I think. That's not to say that the PlayStation 4s look bad, but like in motion, all of this stuff is just significantly more impressive. At number five is Odd World Soulstorm versus Odd World New and Tasty. The latter being a remake, the former being a brand new game that definitely does up the ante, graphically speaking. Now, that's not to say the remake of the original Odd World game doesn't do a hell of a lot with the graphics. It looked nothing like that before. However, we are looking at a much bigger in scale game. However, it does keep the 2D side scroll mechanics it feels like we're pulling back a bit too far too often in the playstation 5 footage but we are seeing a big jump in what these cinematic segments look like i mean it definitely didn't used to look basically like a pre-rendered cartoon and now it does the environments were nice and detailed in the ps4 game however we're talking some pretty insane jumps in what they're even attempting as far as visually and mechanically speaking it's a game i'm really happy to see but i also hope that the clear ambition they have with the title which is good doesn't hinder it in any way and number four is astro's playroom versus astro bot rescue mission this is a sequel to a psvr game although i'm gonna go ahead and say they didn't specifically say anything about the new psvr i have to imagine it's going to be part of it however i would like it if you were able to play it without the vr just on account the original is actually a great platformer that's fun with vr sure but probably could have reached a wider base if they had figured out ways for there to be ultimately another mode of play i mean as you can see graphically there are some upgrades but not huge ones i'm not so certain this is really going to be something that we're in desperate need of comparison between the two however i am interested to see just exactly what they do with the vr and like i said it's overall just a fun platformer on its own in some respects i wonder how much they're going to be attempting to show off the new controller it did seem for certain that was what they wanted to do at number three, we want to talk about what NBA 2K21 looks like compared to NBA 2K20. Now, I want to go ahead and say we did not get a lot to judge this game off of. In some respects, there's some big time social distancing going on in this trailer, although they also made sure to show us the difference between the character models, which in some respects, we might be looking at a big jump. Our man is very sweaty in this new trailer. He is very affected by lighting. And in previous versions of the game, obviously we've got stadium lighting, which can look amazing, don't get me wrong. But I do for sure think that they went out of their way to show us a lighting situation that would maybe not be typical just to show off some form of better lighting. I don't know exactly how reflective of gameplay this footage is going to be, but I'll say it just looks a lot more human than anything in the previous game, anything in the previous game. Look at him. Number two, we're going to do a comparison between this Demon Souls remake, some Dark Souls 3, and a little Demon Souls on the PS3. It's obviously not entirely fair to just directly compare this new version of it to the old version of it. Demon Souls was originally a PS3 game, which is two generations, not one generation. But we do see a big jump from what we saw on the PlayStation 4. Although PlayStation 4 is a pretty game, don't get me wrong. We've got big environments, good environmental effects. The sort of scale of those effects is up significantly here, though. Like, look at the rain and the scale and the magic effects that we're looking at. Like, look at that. That's beautiful. Nice environmental fog. I mean, what we're talking about is along the lines of just everything looks more cinematic, maybe. It's not as though this doesn't look good. It's that this looks way better. And I think there's obvious things like poly count and better effects, but less obvious things like ambient occlusion that are totaling in something that looks just way better. And finally, at number one, we're talking about Resident Evil 7 versus Resident Evil 8. The PlayStation 5's 8 was kind of a surprise reveal, and it's really incredibly detailed and pretty looking and scary looking and grimy looking. But we have to remember that Resident Evil 7 on the PlayStation 4 looked really good. Do I think there's an obvious jump in what's possible? Yes, I do. We do see some general better realism as far as lighting. Hair looks better. Smaller environmental texturing looks better. I mean, we're kind of going for the same vibe with the creepy haunted house thing, but this one's much more grandiose and textured. The outdoor environments look far more realistic this time around. And while Resident Evil 4 went for this more mold-oriented, nasty baddie, we're kind of seeing a little bit more of a mystical, supernatural type baddie this time around, albeit a little bit along the lines of what you'd see in Resident Evil. So stylistically, there's a big difference. As far as fidelity goes, there is a definite jump as well. I mean, obviously. As far as what we're looking at on the PlayStation 5, I mean, everything has had the anti upped. It's all incredible looking, and I'm really excited for this console generation. How